All right, ladies and gentlemen, David Kinder here. Today, I had the idea of creating a quick uh, HP12C basic financial calculator tutorial. And the reason is that I believe that most insurance agents and financial professionals, if you can't use a financial calculator of any kind, you will have your credibility doubted. And it's so important that we know how these financial calculators work. And the hardest one to use, and the oldest best-selling one, is from HP. It is the 12C. There's a couple of different models of HP 12C out there. The classic one is HP 12C Gold, which is not the one here on the screen. The Gold one is, uh, it's slower, and it's slower on purpose. Here's what's interesting. When they designed this calculator back in the late 70s to be created 1981 1982 um the it, it actually had a slower processor on purpose you would see it saying running 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 this way you'd actually trust the calculation it's going to give to you <laughs> so it's kind of a almost a marketing sales tool in a way <laughs> uh for hp selling you the hp 12c platinum is far quicker and by the way this is the kind of calculator that is allowable on the cfp exam CFA, Charter Financial Analyst, and any other designation programs. Also, um, there are other calculators like the HP uh, 10BA2, 10BA2 Plus. There's a bunch of different ones of those. Those are actually a little bit better than this model because you can get a lot more details and amortization schedules and things. So it really is really good. Although it's interesting, I did some price checking um, oh, I think it was a couple of weeks ago. And they're like $60 now, which is kind of interesting. They used to be only like 30. Uh, there's also the HP 17 B2. And if you want that one, that one's probably a hundred dollars or more. This one, I had to replace mine. This is like my fourth HP 12 C the last one, the multiplication key gave out and it wouldn't work. So the last one lasted me about 15 years. Um, there's also a couple of calculators from Texas instruments, the BA two and the TA, TIBA2 plus. I think BA stands for business analyst. So let's kind of get into this. First of all, what you're going to see in the display, see th that those letters there, RPN? RPN stands for reverse Polish notation. Now you're like, what in the hell does that mean? Well, it's a different way of inputting figures into the calculator as opposed to algebraic notation. Now, the platinum version has both. You'll see it here in the red, RPN, and over here is ALG. Now, I have default to RPN, but let's go here to function ALG, because this is where 2 plus 2 equals. There's 4, okay? Well, if we go to RPN, you don't do 2 plus 2 equals. It doesn't work. It works more like Excel does. So it's actually 2 enter two plus and that's how you get four so you're putting in the number into the stack so we're entering a figure then we're going to put in the next figure and now we're going to tell it what to do with the prior figure so two enter two times you know whatever you're going to do with it i have become so accustomed to it it's now uh, second nature i almost can't use any other calculator now it takes a little bit of understanding um, so, for example, I'm going to throw out some numbers here. We're going to say 100,000. Oops, one more. By the way, CLX is clear if you can't figure that out. And by the way, to clear the register function, CLX, that clears the whole thing out. That's like, you know, CE or something on your regular calculator. So 100,000. Let's suppose I wanted to gross that up by 20% tax bracket to figure out what I would need to withdraw from a qualified plan. So it's going to be 0.8, which is the inverse of 20%. I'm going to hit divided by. I need to withdraw 125,000 to get my 100,000 based on a 20% tax bracket. Okay. And then 0 0.03, how much I need against a, a qualified retirement plan to not run out of money. That's assuming a 3% safe withdrawal, 3% divided by. So you see how I'm putting in the figures using just the, the 10 keypad. You put in the figure, you tell it what to do with the previous one. Now, this R key, with the R key and the down arrow, you can go right down here and go back through, usually, all the different numbers you put in. So if I put in 100,000, I hit enter, and 125, 
thousand and I hit enter again, hit the down key and you can see that you can scroll through and there's actually four entries that you can put in. It's a little weird, but it's a nice way to go back and figure out your work. I usually don't. I usually just clear everything out and start over again. By the way, one of my own tips on this calculator, normally it comes with maybe two decimal points uh, showing up. You know, so function two, you guys should have function nine to show all those digits. What I like about having four is that usually you don't need more than two decimal points. So if you're putting in something, you know, 7.35%, you hit enter, having those two decimal uh, additional places shows that it was received by the calculator. So I find it to be a, an entry tool to help me make sure that I'm on top of that, what's going into my calculations. Okay, that all being said, a financial calculator is going to be used for generally present value, future value, payments, solving for an interest rate, solving for number of years, all those kinds of things. So I want you to take a look at the very top, these five areas. N is for number. And then I is for the interest rate. PV is for present value today, payment, future value. And by the way, we're going to use this CHS. This is a change sign uh, thing. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So let's do some basic math. Let's suppose that I want to have $1 million in the future, and let's say 25 years from now. And we're going to assume a given interest rate. How much do I need to contribute to a plan over 25 years to have a million dollars? So what do we do? Well, we're going to put in $1 million. One. And there it is. And this is our future value. Okay. We're going to say 25 years. So we put 25. We, and we go. We don't have to hit enter. We go straight to the field we want to put it in. So we're going to put that in for N. Let's assume a 5% interest rate. I'm just going to pick a nice number, 5%. And of course, you can make it as detailed as you want. We got 10 decimal points. Um, future value, we're going to say that we're starting with nothing. Zero, or, excuse me, for present value. We're going to start with nothing, putting zero for present value. Now, we've got a, a figure in each one of these four. When we hit PMT, it's going to solve for payment. How much do we need to save each and every year at a 5% interest rate to have a million dollars in 25 years? And it's really quick. We need to save twenty thousand nine fifty two and forty five cents. OK, now I want you to notice something. Notice that that figure is a negative. And that's because you're taking the money out of your pocket to put to contribute to whatever you're going to put it into. So it's a negative figure. So I want you to realize that you're putting in negatives to get your positive. That's why that change sign thing is so important. So let's suppose that we take out the change sign. We put that in for payment. What happens to our future value? Because you could just easily put that in for another field, click on another one, and have it do the solve. Notice that that one is negative. It's always a negative brings out a positive, or a positive brings out the negative. They're inverse to each other. So it's a little bit different there. So I use it very simply. How long do I need to do things for? What interest rate do I need? So let's suppose that I want to put in... Um, well, let's use similar numbers, 25,000. And we're going to put that into our present value. So we're starting with 25,000. We're going to do 25,000 in addition each and every year as a payment. We're going to do it for uh, 40 years. We're assuming we're talking to a 25-year-old, right? And we're going to assume 8% rate of return. Who wants to assume that? I usually don't, but we're going to throw that in there. Future value. $7 million. Well, of course, $7 million and almost 20000 Okay. That's how the calculator generally works. Now, there's a whole lot more you can do with it. Um, I want to point out that if you look in the manuals, the blue under function, you know, these G things here, there's some specific purposes for that. So, for example, if you wanted to calculate by month, then, you know, let's suppose that your N is a month and you want to times it by 12, you can do that. So our N at the time was 40, right? Well, what if we want to make it, um, is, is, what well, if that's 40 months and we want to make it uh, times 12? So you could do that, 480. 
very simple. Or we don't want 480 months. This is really helpful for, for mortgages. So let's suppose you're looking at, at a 120-month mortgage, which is a 10-year mortgage. Well, 120 months, we want to divide that by 12. So it's very simple to alternate between those amounts. And then you just enter it in for what you're looking for. Okay, that number didn't mean anything. Um, that's generally how I use it. Let's uh, refocus here. Um, I can't think of anything else that I could really add. I don't go into like the Black Shoals options formulas. There's over 100 steps to program those things in. I don't know any of that stuff. Um, by the way, there's cash flow options for CFO, CFJ, NJ. I don't remember what those mean. There's dates, which could be helpful for figuring things out for um, the dates of amortization. Um, there's a lot of things this calculator can do, but I don't you do them all. I keep it very simple. I do simple arithmetic and I do the, the financial functions. That's about it. You just have to know what is it you're trying to solve for, put in the other figures, and be able to hit that last one last, and you're going to get your figure. So that's kind of it. I just wanted to do something on that really quick. Um, but again, because of reverse Polish notation, you got to remember that's an enter key, not equals. Um, but if you change it to algebraic, it'd be a whole lot easier to work with um, to make that transition. But, you know, again, two enter two plus. That's one of the harder things. But once you get used to it, it becomes second nature. It's so much easier mentally my mind flows a whole lot better using reverse polish notation than it does without um i don't even use it anymore and by the way you can get these calculators. obviously i have a physical one which i think is better for presentation purposes a physical calculator is more authoritative um just to show you i do have a um an app for my phone which of course is very helpful so that's my phone. It works the exact same way, but having a phone to me is a little bit cheap and chintzy. Um, real quick, I'm gonna show you that I have an app for my computer. So let me uh, do this. I'm gonna show, share my screen and real quick, share my window and share. This is how much of a nerd that I am. I have this financial. I barely use it though. It's on my, uh, it's on my computer here. It's from RLM Software. I paid twenty or twenty-five bucks. RLMTools.com is where you can pick this up. I think this is probably far more helpful if you have a touchscreen. Uh, without it, you've got to use your mouse to do everything. It's nice that you can customize the inscription and everything, but it works the exact same way, all the same functions and everything. So yeah, I'm kind of an HP 12C nerd. I only use the platinum versions and I carry it with me everywhere I go. So anyway, I hope you find this somewhat helpful and useful, uh, especially <laughs> the RPN stuff and solving for basic financial equations. I'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching and listening and make it a great day.